I've been doing a bit with robots myself. Um, basically, with after school clubs in schools. So, um, I got the magician robot as well. And the first club, they, we did it, they screwed it together. So that was, you know, that was the first lesson over. Then we got a Raspberry Pi, and um, just basically wired this up with uh, ULN 2003. So it's not a motor controller, it's just a simple Darlington buffer. But it costs 37 pence. And I'm all about doing this cheap. Because, you know, I don't have that vast budget that, you know, Tim has where he can get whole fast sets and blow five pounds willy nilly, you know. I mean, that's, good, you know, that's just not where I'm at at all. I persuaded, um, I work in about six, six schools. Well, I work about six schools and I persuade all the head teachers to give me eight pounds towards the project, which made me buy a number of pies, uh, the magician sashes, a few bits and pieces. And I believe my wife isn't watching this on, online. I've put a bit of money into it myself, so I'll just hopefully she's not watching the live stream. She said that she won on this. Um, so we've done things in schools. We've got a couple of videos. I'll show a couple of videos. I won't bore you with all of them because they're all on there and you can look at them at any stage. But the trick is, you just need a Pi and a Wi-Fi dongle and batteries. Now, I like the advantage of the low dropout regulator with just one set of batteries. At the moment, most of my robots require two. They need me 20 pound USB batteries. I got away with them um, 12.99 ones. Somewhere, little pebble sticks. I've gotten cheap in um, PC world. But getting them down to just being able to use an AA battery <coughs> is going to considerably decrease your costs. Because the chassis costs fifteen pounds, the Pi costs twenty pounds if you use an ear. Your Wi-Fi dongle that's five pounds. Your breadboard and electronics there that that that, that that's a fiver. I think the wires cost more than that, you know. So you only need ten quid for, for the electronics. Now this robot's equipped with infrared sensors, so they can detect your your line on a carpet. Um, I found out in schools they're not very good at detecting the between a carpet and a piece of masking tape. Uh, we found that one out. But if you print off a black line on some A3 paper off the photocopier, they will do that. And I'll show you a couple of videos of that. So this is like my go-to robot that we would use in the after-school club, the one we tried first. But I found there's issues with control with the motors. You, you say both motors forward at the same speed, and it goes that way, you know. So um, I watch Simon's robots, and they seem to go in a forward direction. Jason's going in a forward, but I'm, I'm probably not winding it up right. Um, but that's what I do with that one. Since then, of course, uh, Tim came along with his, well, free to me because he just gave me this. Uh, you know, there's a Raspberry Pi box. So that's his chassis that he's using for RG, you know, mainly. But I've got a Raspberry Pi on there. Um, now, imagine this one is the motors that we buy off eBay for this, which are dead cheap, a couple of quid each, yeah? Yeah. But more highly geared than the motors that come with the magician sashes. More highly geared, it means it runs slower. Runs slower, less chance of falling off the table, but we still do it on the floor. But it just makes it easier to control to start with um, when I'm, you know, playing with, when I'm sort of like setting up a club. I've done the club now about um, three times. Uh, next year I'll be sort of, you know, this will all be practice this year. Next year we'll do the property. So it's a lot better with a slower robot. My problem is I can't persuade Tim to go into full business production with this. He says, just get your DT department to cut it. Well, I don't have a 40 watt laser in our DT departments in primary schools. So I really want him, his business section, to set them up and start flogging them for four quid so we can buy them rather than stealing them from them. But there you are, that's very good. But that's still too expensive. Still too expensive for my liking. So this holiday, this will be my pride and joy, using stepper motors. Um, now these stepper motors are much cheap on uh, eBay, a couple of quid each. What they have the advantage of, you can go down that you can, down. they can go, yes. sorry, here? Over here? <coughs> no, this is, yeah, you yeah. Like just walk that way. Stick it on that camera there. as well. Yeah, that's right. So here we have yeah. the stepper motors. If I stepper motors, you get bi-directional control for nothing. As long as you can put power into the motors, you can make them go forwards and backwards. Whereas with the DC motors, you do need a motor controller board. I think the cheapest chip is probably about £1.50, but I don't like spending £1.50. These motors come with a ULN 2003. 
for two quid. Motor, controller, two, that, that's what I want. So I'll take them all out. You might think it's a bit troublesome, but it's actually just four wires coming out. So there's lots of four wires. It's actually quite simple to wire it up. Um, I've got the ultrasonic sensor on the front. Um, somebody was talking before, I think it was Tim, about various things on the internet and how to wire them up. Well, somebody's worked out, of course, we don't want to connect a pulse trigger and an echo trigger. So he's just worked out with three resistors. You can use one pin, send the pulse, turn your GPIO port back around as an input, and listen for it coming back. You've got plenty of time to do this. So now you just need three wires going to this thing, plus a few resistors. I'll probably just uh, sit in the summer holidays and pick a few up on Veriport to convert them to plug in, so it's easy for class to use. So, you might think, what's this talk about cheapness? He's got a Pygo case there. Well, you know, did a good deal with them, met up with the man. So I've got a Pygo case, and I'm just trying it out on this. But, you know, that's, nobody's gonna spend 10 pounds on a case. Not for one of my bots, anyway. So here we have my Eureka moment. I think it was Saturday, wasn't it, when I came up with this one? Exactly the same concept, but basically just attach the stepper motors to your three pound case. So it's as close now as possibly you can get to just a pie bot. If you have two wheels, you just need to have something there that will stop it tipping over backwards. So the motors, two pound each, four pounds. You've got to make your wheels out of something. I'm sure you can come up with something circular that will fit on. Case, three pounds. Yeah, it's, it's, it's down to less than a tenner on top of your pie. So if you had your pie that was um, your Model A at 20 quid and the wire bike, so that gets it down, not quite pocket money price, because well, I don't know what people get for pocket money now, but it certainly gets the cost down to as cheap as possible. Now this hasn't actually run yet, and it's only actually held together by some double-sided facilitators, the pads just trying to fix up because I did run out of time and I thought I could get it going but I thought no, you can all see it, you can all do it. So we've got the cost of the robots really, really down which is good because it just depends on different levels. You know, if you want to easily get one and get going then I would recommend this because, you know, you buy that, you buy your pie, you buy your board, you plug it in together, you can get on with using your robot but if you want to spend more time assembling it's a trade-off of money versus cost, isn't it? Just, you know, what, what you want to do with it. Um, and one of the ambitious things, which might have been a step too far, is in one of the clubs where there was only one person. I didn't advertise it well enough. Uh, we've seen this. £3.50. More time to put it the right way, Simon. Oh, I thought, ooh, walking robot. Yeah, that looks a bit more exciting. Um, now this has only got one motor in it and the shaft running all the way through. I was looking at the mechanism and we sat down in this year six lad and we tried to come up with our own version in bigger connects. Um, this is not his fault I would say, this is my fault. Uh, it's trying to copy the cam mechanism. The idea is that this motor here that you can buy is very good. It's called Tani, Tani, Tani Ma or something like that. It's got two motors in one box, if you have two motors, two gear shafts. So it's a very convenient package to plug in. And the idea is it'll make one go up and down, and the other one go up and down, and it'll waddle along. It's not done that successfully yet, I can tell you, and I think we are lacking in our Kinex design skills. The lad did admit, he says, I'm not the best with Kinex. Uh, so we have roped in a, a year three lad who seems to be a lot, a lot better at it than us. But if anybody's got suggestions on how we can make that work, I would be very grateful. So there we are, that's all that lot. I will just quickly show the outcome in the schools. Because that's to me, that's what that's what I'm that's what I'm here for. Top one Martin? Yep. So Quickly run through. This is one of my rover clubs. We only in the last half term, which was a short half term. If you've got kids, you know that. So I'll just click through all of them. It doesn't take long. Here we go. So that's um, the Tim Bowler chassis design. Going slowly. Oh, it's 
And the program is up in Scratch. Yeah. All my stuff's been with doing Scratch. So all you got to do is press arrow keys and control it. Left, forward, right, and then forward. Yeah, the left and right was our main issue. Yeah, as you can see. <laughs> and left, this forward. is actually true. The the programmer is quite visually right. challenged. So that's why forward, he's giving him the left right. and right because he can't see the robot forward, very well at all. He, he can see yeah. the screen and does the programming <coughs> in Scratch. You know, but he, but he struggles to see the robot away in the distance. Stop. So that's why the teamwork going on here. Forwards. Left. So the original program is just switch the motor on, left and right, switch which motor off. The whole idea of your robot is you switch one, both motors on, it goes straight, you switch one off, it turns. And that's all you've got to know about robotics. So week two. Yeah, we've added uh, an ultrasonic sensor to the board here now and the robot people and uh, we now have a new member, here's Thomas, say hello Thomas. Hi. He's joined the club and we've made it so that um, if we press the arrow key it just goes forward but if it finds an object in front of it less than 20 centimetres away then it turns left for a second. So Ben's going to press the arrow key and the boys are going to show it avoiding stuff. Go Ben. Right, put something in front of it please. No. Put something in front of it, please. And this is all doing it by itself. Put something in front of it before it goes beneath the table. Lovely. Put something in front of it, please. Brilliant. So we've made our first automatic, semi-automatic robot. I don't know what's going to happen when it gets to the leg here. Ah, it never found us the leg, so we need to improve it a bit. That was the first thing of that, you know, but that's obviously part of the learning. I mean, we moved on quickly here, but maybe, you know, come up with methods to find the leg. I don't know, we put the, put the sensor, I just don't know if we could put that in a step of things, scan around. It's going to go forward, cross them. Cross them? Yeah, so they're being crossed over. Or just bend them a bit. Yeah. Hey, that's the sort of thing. That's less than a fiver. Right, right. Well, <laughs> we'll be doing that. Good. So that's that one. Yeah, we've added uh, an ultrasonic sensor to the board here now. And the week three, sorry. Now we're starting to poop on gas, though. Right, here we have Dylan and Ben, our roboteers. And here we've got Pi 1. This is not Pi, this is Pi 1. And we've got it with sensors and we've programmed it that hopefully it'll follow the line. Here we go. I'm very emotional in this video, by the way. It's working! Look at that! As you can see, if the sensor goes over a line, it stops one of the motors. Yes! <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so there you are. That was very good. And actually, the robot, of course, on that demo, and I really wanted to try and wander off more, it decided it would, you know, go too straight. But hopefully, you could see it working there. Right, here we have it on our run two. We've modified the program so hopefully it will see the wall using its ultrasonic sensor and stop before it hits it. Off you go, Ben. Here it comes. Beautifully following that line. It's the best line follower you've ever seen. Look at that. It knows about black lines. But is it going to stop before it hits the wall? This is the question. We programmed it. Yes! It's like watching the uh, hey, TV yes. Go, isn't it? You know. So there we are, there's that one. And then our final week this is where we got our mask and tape. Okay, we've had a few runs. We think we can follow the line here. We've painted, put some masking tape on the floor. It wasn't bright enough, so we painted it white. Dylan's idea. It's Dylan's fault if we get paint on the floor. You're gonna full screen and it. And also we've lowered the sensors. So we're ready to go, and I'll just swing around to Ben. Ben, are you ready? Ben's going to press space bar, and here we go. There goes the robot. Look at that robot. Look at that robot. Is it going to make it? Is it going to make it? This could be the most fabulous, brilliant. I can't believe this is working. <laughs> Now we have to take a big scale. Yes! Look at that! 
Fantastic! Can we take it big scale now? Yep. So that's what Dylan wanted. He wanted to go big scale. He wanted to lay the masking tape all the way around the classroom. I said, well, we haven't got time to paint it and let it dry. <laughs> so I've been to Betty's in England. I'll just give them that thing. They sell all sorts of um, insulation tape. So I've got some really bright white insulation tape. And we'll hopefully give that a go back in the summer term as a show and tell to the rest of the class to, to sort of say, look, you should have turned up to a robot club, look what we were doing. They've actually painted new white lines on the uh, playground, um, you know, the playground. So we might be able to actually get it to go around the whole playground and demonstrate the whole school, which would be good, which would be good. So that's what I'm doing with them. Again, if anybody's got any questions here? Yeah. No, good, 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 good. Thank you very much.